Crypto curious, keep an open mind, enjoy the conversation, and stay crypto current. Now, here's your host, Richard Carthon. Hey everyone, before we dive into today's episode, we just wanted to address everything that is going on, and we thought it would be appropriate to let everyone know that we do not support racial injustice throughout the world and that we support the Black Lives Movement. Cryptocurrent is here to provide education to any and everyone, and we stand firm with making sure that racial injustice is no longer accepted, and we are happy to see all of the demonstrations that are being in taking form all across the world. Um, to the family of George Floyd, our hearts are with you, and to everyone that is trying to continue to make this world better, uh, we are here with you, and we stand with you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today, got a very special guest. Um, during the pre-show, we kind of just been chopping it up, and he has an absolutely amazing story and a lot of great insights to, to give you on the impact that he is already doing on a global level. Um, really excited to unpack all this with Ray Yosef with Paxful. How are you doing today? I'm good, sir. I'm very happy to be here. As you can see, I even combed my afro down for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. really appreciate it, man. And right now, I think calling out of Estonia, and I know you got four offices all over the all over the world right now. Um, and yes, we're in COVID times, but um, before we even just dive into this, you say, you know, your company is growing at such a great rate that y'all are hiring right now, which is amazing compared to where I know a lot of companies are absolutely doing the opposite. Yeah, so, yeah, plus, thank God. You know, we're doing better than ever right now. A peer to peer trading volume rose by 20% just from the last month alone. Signups are up wow. by 36%. The rate is continuing to grow all over peer to peer. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, man. That's great problems. That's great and amazing things that are, that are in the pipeline for y'all. But, you know, before we dive into this interview, let's uh, get a little bit of background on yourself. Can you tell us a little about, who, you know, who you are and, and, and how you even got into the crypto space in the first place? My name is Ray Youssef, as you know. I'm, I'm an immigrant, first-generation immigrant. My parents came over from Africa to New York when I was two years old and uh, grew up in New York. And I uh, got into computers when I was 19 years old, and being and I just started trying to find a way to start my business on it right away. It was, uh, I, was I got the hustling gene, the entrepreneurial gene. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had uh, 13, uh, I've had 11 failures in a row and a total of 13 startups, right? Paxful okay. is my lucky number 13. <laughs> <laughs> it's the charm, right? <laughs> yeah, in this case, yeah. So I, I learned a lot about Paxful before, six years ago in New York City. I, me and my co-founder were actually homeless. You know, we, that's how, how hard it was for us in the beginning. We didn't know exactly what was going on. We didn't know what was going on, period. But one thing that we did do that no one else has been able to do seemingly in this space is we stayed connected to the streets. You know, there's mm -hmm. all the, if you look at crypto Twitter and you look at what's happening in the real world with Bitcoin, it's a completely different story, right? People right. have more problems out there. And we figured out what those problems are because we listened to our users and particularly the users of Western Africa has taught us everything we know about Bitcoin and what its killer app actually is. I'm here to share everything. Amazing. Well, let's start from the beginning, man. What was your first introduction uh, to crypto? What year was it? How'd you learn about it? And and what inspired you to like want to potentially pursue a career in it? I think I heard about it as early as 2011. I just dismissed it as nerd money. And then <laughs> 2013, I uh, went to my first Bitcoin meetup. And uh, that's where I met Artur Shabak. He was uh, he's now my co-founder, my best friend. We're, you know, kind of married like co-founders usually are. <laughs> yeah. Back to my baby, right? And I met him at the first Bitcoin meetup I went to at the Bitcoin Center in New York City. And we became fast friends. We decided to start something. It didn't work. It was a retail merchant POS and uh, there was no Bitcoin around. So it didn't make sense. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to get guys you know, selling hot dogs and beer in New York to, to accept Bitcoin because it doesn't make right. financial sense. Too early. Way too early. So we said, hey, there's not enough Bitcoin in people's hands. Let's find a way to solve that. Because, you know, I bought my first Bitcoin on Coinbase, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, it was $8. Yeah. 
I'm not a billionaire. I'm just, you know. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, getting Bitcoin is extremely difficult. You know, we uh, we had our first real, like, we, we were homeless for a little while, right? We were surfing couches. I was actually physically homeless for a little while. Mm-hmm. And the whole time we were building Paxil and we're trying to find a use case. We're trying to find something that would make it sick. Because people were coming to us buying Bitcoin for all kinds of things. We weren't sure why they were buying it. And then one day I got a phone call from this lady in Louisiana. This was oh, like okay. 3 o'clock in the morning in uh, New York City. Me and my co-founder were crashing at the co- at the couch at a WeWork. We knew the guy who ran it. And uh, we were working. And this lady calls me up and she starts yelling on, on the phone. I'm like, what the? How did you get my number? Who are you? She's like, I got on this website. Like, website? What website? I'm like, Pax, whoa. And she's like, she didn't even know what the website is. It took back and forth for her to actually tell me. That. And I remembered. I left my phone number on the website. Cool. This lady needed Bitcoin. She started screaming. She's down to her last thirteen dollars, and she needed this. She called it uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce it. So yeah. it was six months of taking calls like this from all these people who were not technical, mainstream people, and all they wanted to do was to get some Bitcoin, post up an ad on this classified ad site that lost her Visa and Mastercard merchant account. Mm-hmm. And every single call I got was the same. They were angry. They were confused. They had spent eight hours surfing the internet and they could not get any Bitcoin. And they were just like disgusted and pissed off. But I walked each and every single one of those people that called me through on the phone to buying their first Bitcoin and actually using their first Bitcoin. And it taught me a lot about how to actually build for people. So building for people is uh, Paxful's second virtue. Our first virtue is to stay connected to the streets. And I was. Okay. I'll give you guys a little insight into that particular episode and that is what got Paxwell started on gift cards because I was trying to figure out how to onboard this woman. I was like, okay, how how did you buy stuff from the classified ads site before if you don't have a bank account? She didn't have a bank account. And she's like, okay. oh, a gift card. No, there's 40 million Americans that don't have a bank. This was like a white lady from the South did not have a bank account, never had a bank account, didn't want a bank account. Mm-hmm. So I told her, okay, how did you pay for it before online? She said, oh, I bought a one vanilla Visa card, gift card from the drugstore. I was like, really? Okay. What other gift cards are available? She told me, I was like, okay, go buy any one of these gift cards in the last $13, buy $10 gift cards. And then I, I find people on Paxful that can take the gift cards and sell and, and give them Bitcoin. And for only like, this lady only wanted like 10 bucks. He's like, that's a huge pain in the ass for him to accept so small cards. He said he had to charge a hard high margin, but she didn't care, but she just needed two bucks worth of Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was a case where the price was very high, but these people had no other options. You cannot, if you don't have a bank account, you're not getting Bitcoins or Coinbase. Yeah. Right. And it's complicated to use anyway. So through that whole scenario, we figured out that gift cards were actually the best way to onboard people in emerging markets or the unbanked in developed yeah. markets. Which makes and a lot of sense. What we from there. No, and, and that's you're probably the second or third person that's told me about like the power of gift cards and how just in in a way it's in a way to onboard people who don't have access to bank accounts, but also you need that electronic piece to at least have the cash on deck to then insert into the electronic payment system or what have you of, of what exactly. the bank would need to get that initial money. Exactly. It's like a, it's like the, it's gift cards are a digital asset. Yeah. And, all what Bitcoin can do in the in the realm of peer to peer finance on um, people powered marketplaces like Paxful, they can convert any of that into Bitcoin, right, and into other forms of money, right. And that's what happens. Paxful and peer to peer finance, it, it, Bitcoin's killer app is as a universal translator of money, and that's really how Paxful functions. Because with two peer to peer trades, you can turn anything into Bitcoin, then Bitcoin into anything else. Meaning you can turn anything into anything. If we yeah. just get an abstract the Bitcoin part, do the, automate the two peer-to-peer trades for you, you have a people power network that can literally convert anything into anything else, anywhere in the world, almost instantly, depending on the yeah. limitations. Is that not the greatest invention in the history? Of, at least in the past hundred years, man. Come on, it's not <laughs> no, great. It, it's Michael extremely production, but it's up there, man. It's up man, there. It's, it's way up there, and it's the the challenge has been in what I've spoken with on a lot of people who have come and interviewed on this is finding the the use case for the everyday person, right? So how do we get to mass adoption? How do we get to people who have heard of it, but like, uh, I don't want to deal with this right now. How do we make it to where any 
anyone, anywhere can quickly use this, understand it, and have a marketplace to use it. And it sounds like that's what Paxful is and, is and what it's done. So now, if you don't mind, can you just spend some time unpacking, like, you know, what is Paxful? Um, where are you presently at? And like, where are y'all growing as a company? Okay, sure. So Paxful was founded in 2015 by me and Arthur Schaubach. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. Arthur is now a New Yorker, but he's originally from Estonia. So our first office in New York, but then we had to go back to, we had to go to Estonia to find help cheaply. It was then the bit license also passed, so we kind of had to leave. Now we're back in New York and we're applying for a bit license, but you know, the world is funny, right? Oh, so we right. have 250 people right now around the world is the total size of PAX. So we never took a dime from any venture capitalists or anything. We're totally bootstrapped. Thank God for that. And uh, Paxful has figured out a few things. So first of all, what Paxful is, is a people-powered marketplace for money transfers for anyone, anywhere, at any time, borderless, right? We have three tools, right? One is stay connected to the streets, right? That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you get traction. That's how you keep offering value for people. You must listen to people. You can't just see people as numbers or as users. They're your community and you learn from them. They help you and they teach you about what your product can actually do, which the African people have definitely taught us. And the second is to build for people. And that's a big thing that crypto is missing. There's not any product people in crypto. They think just the beauty of the technology and the elegance of the code and the curve of the elliptical, like it's all junk, man. No one cares about that. You have to build for human beings. You know, we're not, Paxful's not an abstract thing. It's a tool that real humans use every single day. That's what Bitcoin, at least I thought that's what Bitcoin was here to do in the beginning. And I still believe that, but mm -hmm. looking at crypto Twitter, it doesn't seem that way. So build for people. Guys. We're not building, you know, for other robots. We're building for human beings. And our third yeah. value is to be heroic, to do heroic things, right? Because we are living in the, I don't think people, I mean, of course, we're still in lockdown. People realize stuff is going on in the world, but we are living in truly epic times. And with, you know, some politician somewhere or banker can click a few buttons and you can see a massive run on, on any economy, economy's currency. Look at Venezuela or Argentina, <laughs> Nigeria in the past eight weeks has, has seen its currency devastated. Whenever that happens, people need help. Like imagine losing your life savings in a week. If your family has spent, you know, generations building up. Exactly. Hold on. Just make that make that point again, because I want this to like hit home for people. I think in the, in the U.S., like we, we don't really see that. Yes, like in the marketplace, when all this first started happening and the Dow and everything else went down, and yes, people lost 20%. People are losing their entire life savings in a week yeah. or two. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had to like re-stress like, like how yeah. Thank you. just, and people are being impacted by this right now. You imagine you, that happening to you, your neighbor, everyone else around you. Like you be, all become poor, like almost to me, like what? It's, it's, it's really like demonic, honestly. So we, if we can come to the aid of those people, we are literally doing God's work. We're heroes. And this is an age where heroes are needed. Because every single time, just look at Lebanon. They got hit by a deflationary attack. And now look at their economy. People are burning banks over there. And that can happen anywhere in the world right now, especially as we go in further and further into this you know, I think we're entering a golden age, honestly. And whenever yeah. a golden humanity is about to embark upon a golden age, things pop up to slow us down, right? Or try to slow us down. This time, you know, they're going to play their games, but humanity is going to have this golden age. But there are certain growing pains we must go through. So there's going to be a lot of room for heroism in the world. And that's, those are the three values of Paxful. As far as what Paxful, like, really is, it's, it's an awesome team. I think it's the biggest hearted team in the world. And it's a very, very young team. You know, but we're like family here. We're really trying to save the world with this crazy mission. You know, we went to Africa four years ago and I immediately got it. It's like, I, I, these people are ready to move forward. Like I've never seen these people are brilliant. The, the entrepreneurs there are, are like, they're young, they're, they're ambitious, they're brilliant and they're ready to move. Like they don't care about the past. They're not blaming anyone from everything. Africans don't have a victim mindset. They just want to build. They just want to move forward. And when you see them, I'm like, wow, what are they missing then? I mean, okay, so the, the Africans are not, this is the thing, you know, when I, we went to Africa four years ago, it was like, oh, those people aren't going to buy Bitcoin. You're crazy, boy. They're only making $2 a day, boy. You're not going to buy no Bitcoin. <laughs> That's the stuff I had to hear. And people still feel that way. I'm like, all right, fine. But when I saw the problems that they had with money over there, and it's not that they lack money. There's a lot of money in Africa, believe me. There are billionaires over there. The country has a lot of wealth. It's just the people can't use it. The money is really trapped in the prison of its own country. In fact, if you're in like Nigeria, it's hard just to send money to the country next door. 
like Benin or, or, you know, if you're in South Africa, it's hard to send money to Malawi. It's almost, it's almost impossible in Africa to send money to the country next door, right? Mm-hmm. Using your bank, it's a nightmare. Even using wallets like M-Pesa, you think it would have solved all the problems? And M-Pesa is available in seven countries out of 54 of Africa. Mm-hmm. But you can't send from M-Pesa Kenya to M-Pesa Ghana or M-Pesa South Africa. They, yeah. they don't, yeah. they, they don't, don't, they don't talk to each other. They're slow well, back and no, forth. Oh my no, God. No, no, no. It blew, it blew, like seven different networks. I'm like, what? Why? I don't even, like, there's all these uh, reasons behind that that stem from regulation and this and that. But when you, when you see how deep the problems are, I'll give you another example. If you're in Nigeria and you have money in the bank, maybe you have a lot of money in the bank. They give you a debit card over there. They limit you to $100 uh, a month you can spend your debit card online. No, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some banks just recently raised it to a thousand, but even that still like a thousand bucks a month. A like, month. That's it. Wow. Now, if you have your bank account there in dollars, you can go very high. But if you have in the local currency, you put all these restrictions on the people, so like because they don't want the the value of the currency to go down. Because the central bank, the government wants to buy all the stuff they want to buy with the, their foreign money. They don't want to lose their foreign money. You know, because they're buying guns or tanks or. Medical supplies. So they're basically essentially locking up their money so they don't have to print more to cause inflation to try to drive up value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah, that's what works all over Africa. I mean, it gets worse, bro. It gets worse than that, man. Like when I went there and I saw that there's these, there's like, no, sorry. There's uh, uh, 14 countries in Africa that are basically under the rule of, they're still colonies of the French, honestly, because the African franc is about as African as the Federal Reserve is federal. It's literally printed in Paris, sent over to Africa. They pay for it. They pay for the printing. They pay for the right to have their own money created for them. All their leaders' bank accounts are in Paris anyway. I mean, the whole thing <laughs> is the biggest scam ever, and it's still going on to this day. Yeah. That's wild. So I mean, with with all of that going on, and like once you discovered all of this just – I don't want to say corruption, but just like interesting ways of how they have to deal with their governments and money transfers. How are you, how are you able to like take in this information and then give them the power of, of financial freedom? So if you give them a tool that can let them access any financial network in the world, that's powerful. So I'll give you some examples. When uh, the Nigerian central bank, uh, three and a half years ago, when they, uh, they said, hey, we're not going to let people send money out of the country as euros or dollars anymore. They wanted to hold on to their own money because they had a huge run of inflation up to 27% or something. Mm-hmm. So when we did that, all the entrepreneurs that were, say, buying cars in America and Europe and shipping them over to Lagos and making a hefty profit anywhere from 55% to, I think, 300 or 400%, right? Wow. We're buying used cars. So they couldn't do that anymore because they couldn't send money. The bank wouldn't let them send Naria out as dollars to the United States. He said, no, that's cut. So then, you know, I'm online all the time talking to people and people are coming on. I'm the CEO, but I do support but nearly every day. I'm always talking to someone because I want to see what's going on in the streets, right? Yep. And uh, I talked to these guys and like, they told me their story. I'm like, all right, you know, how much is the car? And he's like, oh, it's $9,000. So it was a Land Rover, the first guy I was talking to about this. And he said, okay, I need to buy a Mannheim auction house in Detroit. I was like, all right. Get nine thousand bucks worth of Bitcoin, or you, you know, just get nine thousand bucks worth of Bitcoin, or even a little less, whatever. It's fine. And I'm going to find you a guy in the United States that'll let you use his bank account to make the payment for you. He's like, why would anyone do that? He's like, you're going to give him Bitcoin. He's like, they're going to give me send money for me if I give him Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, we have an how. So he asked all these questions. I told him just get the Bitcoin, can buy it with a bank transfer or anything else. In, in Nigeria, we actually had liquidity there, and I explained to him how the escrow worked. And I said, here, here's an offer. Here's a link. I do it in uh, California. We'll wire the money. He said, it's Bank of America or something with the same bank or whatever. So it could just happen almost the same day. He didn't believe it. But I walked him through the whole thing. So I wanted to see if this was actually going to work for this guy and what would happen if he had that aha moment. And he certainly did, man. It worked. They got the money. He couldn't believe it. And then he even had had the same guy. He sold him more Bitcoin so he could uh, pay the shipping. (laughs) <laughs> to do the shipping for him as well, pay the shipping bill for him as well. The guy was happy to do it. And he paid market rate 
for that Bitcoin, right? And the guy was happy to get Bitcoin on market rate. Because back then, you had to pay a lot, uh, anywhere from three, one to three percent to get Bitcoin. So we got a great price. And the guy basically, he bought the Bitcoin, he sold it, he didn't pay a fee for money to go to the United States at all. And it happened wow. nearly instantly. This this Nigerian business dude was like, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. He he didn't actually believe it until he got the shipping papers as the car was being shipped over. And he called me and he said, well, wow, this is amazing. Is this really going to work? And then like when the guy actually got the car over there, like he scaled up the whole thing to a crazy level. He actually saw that the whole thing would work and he started telling all of his friends. And this is one of the ways that Paxful got started in Nigeria was we talked to real people. Yep. We figure out what the problems are. And I'm like, okay, the tools that we have with this peer-to-peer electronic cash we call Bitcoin and this human layer that we have on, as Paxful peers and you know the, this whole idea of sharing the sharing economy, what can we do to help this person? And we had just what he needed. We had a universal translator of money, Bitcoin, that's empowered through Paxful, people-powered marketplace. It works. It can do yeah. and solve nearly any problem you have with money. Which is amazing. And you went in first and you went to identify a problem and you said, here's how we can fix it. And here's using using technology that's already there. We'll we'll do all the complex layers, but here's how you can go in, use our interface and and solve this. So since then, like having that aha moment, um, I think you said there are over 300 ways that people can interact and like do di- different trying to trans transactions on your platform to to get a thing done. Can you speak a little bit more on that real quick? Yeah, so we have uh, 360 payment methods, maybe a little more right now, mm-hmm. and gift cards, like hundreds of gift cards we support, maybe 170 gift cards we support on there. There's uh, bank transfers, you know, there's online wallets, all the online wallets of the world. You know, Africa has like over 1,700 online wallets or something. And then there's uh, cash, then there's goods and assets, which is something we just added. I bought my, uh, uh, I bought someone. Uh, I bought my wife a little red Mini Cooper on Paxful, a car <laughs> from my friends in Berlin. They sell cars. Uh, so wow. we opened that up. There's uh, also gold. You can buy gold and silver and diamonds on Paxful as well. So those are our major payment method groups. And go again, you can also add a payment method as well. So, you know, as I talk and I give these examples, please, you know, keep this all in mind and keep in mind any of the payment networks that you use. And we can actually add those to Paxful and we can build more corridors that make sense along payment methods that make sense. It's all about matching corridors like China to Nigeria with a use case, you know, and, uh, you know, the right, uh, the right market. And then you have some magic. You can actually start a business that way. Yeah. That's what people also are doing, right? I met, I was in South Africa. I met this one uh, guy. He started his own version of Western Union in South Africa using Paxful and Bitcoin. He yeah. found you know, First thing he did, this is the formula for every entrepreneur, Bitcoin people especially. Like we need product with like minded people in this space, not just, you know, eggheads. You know, eggheads are cool. I'm a nerd, but there's another level, right? You have to find a problem first. That's number one, right? So this guy found a problem. Nigerian workers living in South Africa that don't have bank accounts get paid in cash and want to send money back home. Western Union is a pain for them. They don't like going there because their mother has to wait two days, go on a super long line. You don't want to see the Western Union in Lagos. It's not cool, right? It's, it's a challenge. So they have to do all that. And they're like, okay, that's what they've been doing. This one guy, one of our Paxful users in South Africa said, hey, guys, um, you're paying about 20%, 15% to send this money back home. It takes two days. How about you just deposit the South African rand you have as cash into my South African bank account and give me your mother's bank account in Nigeria? And I'll make sure she gets the money the same day. And it'll be instant. I'll charge you 7% fee. So he took their money and he turned it into Bitcoin. And then he took that Bitcoin. He sold it to someone he knew in Nigeria. Gave the guy his mother's, the other guy's mother's bank account number and said, send the money. So he made a profit every step of the way. He made a profit on the exchange rate for their cash into Bitcoin. He also made a profit on the exchange rate of Bitcoin to Naria. Because in Nigeria, you'll pay a few percentage points extra. Right. And he still managed to charge them less than half, more than half of what they were paying for Western Union. Brilliant. How many such other examples exist? This is an example of remittance as a use case, but there's payments, there's e commerce, you know, there's wealth preservation, there's many, and then there's social justice as well, which we can definitely talk about later. Yeah. Actually, uh, we could probably dive into that right now just because there's a ton of use cases that keep like going through my head and just there's so many practical ways that you can solve problems right now using 
a tool like this. So I want to to speak to, and I would like you to speak to, like what are some of the social justice ways Paxful's been able to affect a lot of people, um, a lot of the different customers that you have? Yeah, so it's called Built with Bitcoin. Built with Bitcoin is a mission, a dream that me and my co-founder had a while ago, and it started... Uh, it started a while ago in New Orleans, actually, but what it's turned into is uh, three schools out of 100 that we want to build. We've already built three of them. Our mission is to build 300 schools in Africa and the emerging world as well. We're not going to ignore and forget about our brothers in India, Indonesia, mm-hmm. Latin America, etc. But I'm, I'm African myself. You know, I was born there to African parents. So I do have a soft spot for Africa. We built with Bitcoin is for the entire world. And built with Bitcoin encompasses many things. That we really thought about it and said, hey, what do what people need to really like take it to the next level? Because when you go and you see like the, the African people in Rwanda, let's say, in Bugusera Village, that's where the genocide first started. And that's where we chose to build our first two schools. And it's a beautiful compound. It's uh, three school buildings. It's water wells, water distribution, water filtration, water storage. We give them uh, uh, school uniforms. We even pay for their health insurance for a year. We educated the teachers, full classrooms. We even put up a clinic just recently. We're always continuing to maintain and operate the schools. So about 400 children, ages baby to 12 years old, go to that school. And we're very proud of that because uh, we're turning each of these little schools into a kind of uh, project, you know, a project based on love. So we're always giving them love. Just added solar panels. You know, We're going to bring them uh, laptops and iPads eventually. Uh, yeah. Once Four panels up there. I've got a few more, uh, a few more of them to support that. But this is kind of uh, something I always wanted to do. I started in New Orleans. I uh, went there out, right after Hurricane Katrina, and mm-hmm. the first city was open. Long story short, because it was three weeks, that was a real adventure. I met these five nuns, and we helped rebuild the first uh, school to reopen in Hurricane uh, in New Orleans after Katrina. Mind me asking which uh, which which school? I, I lived out in New Orleans for eight years. It was the New Orleans Cathedral Academy right in the French Quarter. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Say hi, man. Mary Rose and the gang, man. I was with <laughs> me and five Dominican nuns. And I met friends along the way. I met this trucker who really helped me. We we managed to actually uh not raid, but we we found a Lowe's we, we found a Lowe's hardware store and it was full mm-hmm. of all this stuff. And you know, we were asking it wasn't open, but we asked the dude, we told the dude there our story, yeah, we need some supplies. We're trying to rebuild the school with a bunch of nuns. He looked <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take whatever you want. <laughs> so, anyway, it was, uh, it was like something from the A team. Anyway, that experience showed me the power of education. You could really like the city could come back because the police and fire department could come back. They weren't going to come back if they couldn't put their kids to school. Right. Anyway, so that's where the whole idea really came from. But it's something that's grown bigger than our imagination. And I would encourage every company out there, every fintech company, every crypto company. Built with Bitcoin isn't just Paxful's initiative. It's something that we started, but it should be for the whole community because I know you don't want to give up your hard-earned profits to build schools. I know it's hard to justify that to your investors. Paxful didn't have any investors, so we could do that a lot more easily. But I will encourage you, all of you guys out there, and that includes CZ, Jesse, the whole gang, Arthur Hayes too, yeah, bro. (laughs) If you actually help build a school, I promise you, you will get back 10x whatever you put in there and love from the community and in HR. You know, we've got, Paxwell's team is amazing because we don't get people here that just want money. We get people that want to make a change, that want to change the world. And they say, hey, wait, these guys are building schools for, for no good reason, except they just want to build schools and help people. We get the best and you'll get the best. Too. I highly encourage you. Join Built with Bitcoin. The light side is good. No, that's excellent. And I'm um, definitely going to try to shed some light on that. Give me some more uh, information on that. And um, I'll, I'll make sure that people in, in the cryptocurrency community can can look into that and find more ways to, to leave some impact as well. But Ray, man, you have dropped all kinds of knowledge. Has been an absolutely fun and enjoyable conversation. But what is a final thought that you want to leave with all of our listeners here today? Stay positive, guys. We are entering into a golden age right now. We really are. It might not seem like it, but things are not very fun right now. The earth is kind of half closed for business, but we are truly entering into a golden age. And I feel it with every pore in my body. And Africa will lead the world's first crypto continent. People laughed at this a long time ago. And still a lot of people in crypto think all the money is going to come from the big institutional investor. And no, it's going to come from the people. It's going to come from the people that need it most. 
but we have a lot of work to do. So I am officially shooting out a flare here into the sky. We need help. Actual needs you. We need builders, people that love building products for human beings, for people. Please join us. We need you so badly right now. We truly do. We need like at least seven more awesome product teams. We have all the ideas. They're not coming from our heads. They're coming straight from the people. The people are telling us what they need. We don't have enough hands to build them quickly enough. Join us. If you want to make a huge change in the world, you want to feel like a hero every single day, and you want to get direct feedback directly from the people seeing all the awesome stuff that you're doing, right here. This is the greatest company in the world. For that reason, man. we listen to all of our users and we mobilize to help them every single time. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent, man. Well, what are some different ways that people can either connect with you or go and learn more about Paxful? We have a uh, Paxful.com forward slash careers. They can read up about Paxful careers right there. I'm Ray Paxful on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Telegram as well. Um, I'm everywhere pretty much. Ray at Paxful.com is my email. You know, get in touch with me. I want to hear what you guys think. If you have, especially if you have ideas about product or use cases or people that need help, I want to know. I'm not one of those snooty CEOs. I'm a normal guy, and I love talking to people and I love learning. I truly do. Please reach out. Excellent. Well, again, Ray, really appreciate you being on the show today. And for everyone listening, stay crypto current. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of Crypto Current. For more information on this episode and all of our episodes, please visit us at www.crypto-current.co. Stay up to date with the latest news in cryptocurrency. You'll receive daily emails Monday through Friday that are personalized and curated content specific to you and your interest, powered by artificial intelligence. Are you an accredited investor looking to invest in cryptocurrency? Crescent City Capital can help. Go to crescentcitycapital.com for more information. If you're finding value in our content, please take five minutes to leave a five-star review and a great comment. Also, please make sure to share this podcast with others. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the quality of this podcast. I can only thank my amazing producer, Andrew DeRitter, with DeRitter Productions, who has put this together. If you have any podcast, visual, or video needs, please go to DeRitterProductions.com. That's D-E-R-I-T-T-E-R Productions.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cryptocurrent with Richard Carthon. We'll be back with more exciting developments from the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency next week. But until then, stay Cryptocurrent. Please use available exits now.